Howdy folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is just a quick little video uh, concerning the video I had yesterday. Uh, I re-ran my test oh. Finish. and I did it for, I just let it go over because I wasn't paying attention. I let it run for 3657 seconds whereas yesterday's was 3600 seconds, so it doesn't matter. But the whole thing was, is it iodine-131 or is it uh, 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 radon, so maybe this will help a little bit. Let me grab the camera. First off, um, this is Nekonomi, which I'm hopefully pronouncing right. Nekonomi, if I could just get it right, it means cat's eye. Um, that's the detector inside of there. As you can see, the activity is very, very low for a scintillator. The reason it's so low is because I have this much lead. Yes, it even goes underneath. Lead. Gotta love lead. Free. They gave me some free lead when I bought it. But anyhow, um, I just finished running the samples. And let me put this up here so you can see. Um, if I can lift the top off. God, it's so heavy. There, yeah, see? Here are the little bars. Bars. Interlocked. And um, I want to make this video like two or three minutes long, five minutes of the most, maybe. So. Oh god, that's so hard to move. Ow, move. See, so, this is a problem. Lead is just so damn heavy. There's the sample. Pull it out of the detector. By the way, it was completely clean when I put it in. I've checked that already. There's the actual head of the detector. As you can see, it goes around the back. This is the shield in the back that prevents lead from, oh, not lead, prevents gamma from getting into the back. There it is going into the back. It's a beautiful detector inside of here, but I have to coat it, completely coat it in lead so that nothing can get into it. And inside of there, that is the cavern where it sits. Well, here it is. Nasty crap I had yesterday. So, if it's iodine-131, it is a half-life of, uh, oh, what's the half-life iodine-131? I think it's a couple of days. A couple of days or a couple hours. Let me quickly look that up. As you all know, I always have everything together, right? Here I am saying a five minute video and I'm already looking up stuff. Anyway, um, I owe dine 131. Let's quickly look that up. Iodine 131 was the possibility. Remember, I found 365, give or take, kill electron volts. 364 is iodine 131. Um, iodine has a half life of eight days. Meaning that between now and, 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 and yesterday when I did this, there should be very little change for this. A sum, but very little, if it were iodine. However, um, this is Argonne National Laboratories I got this from, so you know, whatever. So shoot me. But anyhow, um, uh, looking up some of the K energies here for lead 214, 351 is a good example of one. 351 is pretty close to 365. And it looks like my uh, my um, calibration was off by about 10 uh, points. So let me move over here now and let me show you what I found on the screen. And you can see for yourself the two most lively things to find are bismuth-214 and lead-214. And looking at the screen here, um, bismuth-214 is right around here and lead-214 is normally around here. Let me look at what I had yesterday. This is what I had yesterday. This is almost dead on for, for bismuth-214 and lead-214. Uh, so, oops, let me uh, let me load this up here. I'm at four minutes and I'm trying to be really short. Uranium. Now, you're going to see that this is off a little bit and the reason is my calibration, I've, I, have, I have now determined it was the calibration that was off. See? Let me set those two isotopes up. If you look at the isotopes, these are where the peaks these are where the peaks are, here and here, and here. So this is bismuth, this is lead. And as you see they're pretty close. The difference between here and here is three fifty-three to 364, 63, somewhere in there. So it's almost exactly 10. And now yesterday when I did my, um, when I did my um, uh, uh, test, I had a fine grain calibration of 1.81. Today I have 1.82. So 
So, anyhow, I think this is a little bit more accurate than it was before. And the reason behind this, of course, is because, um, well, I'm not very good at calibrating right at this moment. Now look, here's today. See today? Same sample. Yesterday? Today. Yesterday? Today. Same amount of time. And the one, two, three, four most common things that could decay and disappear did. So, what is this? Is this is this lead 214 and, and bismuth 214 common radon decay products? Who knows, maybe. Is it iodine 131? Probably not, although it's possible. I kept the bag completely sealed so that if anything became gaseous it wouldn't get out. Now plastic is a semi-permeable membrane, so the possibility does exist that it could have leaked. And my test yesterday, as I've already stated, was less than, well, less than super. So I, I can't really say for sure on this one, but we'll test it next time. And when we test next time, we can do a curvature where you have counts versus time. And, and what will happen is it will, it will curve like this. And I'll actually leave this thing going for several hours and see if the actual decay works. Because bismuth uh, and, and lead there, uh, have 20 and 27 minutes respectively uh, decay times. That would explain what's happening because... Calc. Seven half lives of 27 minutes is 198 minutes divided by 60 minutes is only 3.15 hours. So you'll lose almost all of it in about 3.15, uh, 3.15 hours. And if you've noticed, that is about how long it usually takes most people to lose the higher counts. So anyway, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and um, this is just a quick little update. Bye-bye. Uh,